is Rebecca Tavaldi. I am the director of music and organist here at First Presbyterian Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I welcome you here to the organ console at our church. I am up in the front of the church. You can't see that from your camera view. Um, but I'm going to point you to our church website, which is www.stillwaterfpc.org, as in Stillwater First Presbyterian Church. And on that website, there is an organ page. And you can look at the organ page and see a lot of details, like the number of pipes and exactly what they are, what their names are. I'm going to just give you a brief introduction today from the console, uh, a little bit of sampling of sounds and what this instrument can do. First of all, it is made by the Reuter Organ Company. It was made in 1955, dedicated in 1956. The Reuter Organ Company is in Lawrence, Kansas, and that company is alive and well today and the president, actually, of the company takes care of our instrument here. He comes by two or three times a year to tune all the pipes, and yes, every pipe has to be hand-tuned. So very labor-intensive and takes a really good ear as well. Um, the organ has gone through a couple of renovations in its history. The first major one was in 1996, when it gained several ranks of pipes. And in 2009, again, a few more ranks of pipes, um, and also um, just a renovation. Every now and then you have to clean organs, you have to repair things, replace parts, just like on a car or any other piece of mechanical equipment. Um, the organ is an amazing feat of engineering and also a work of art. So those two elements combine. On our console here, which is what we call, the, what we play, this is where we play. The sound comes out of the pipes. The sound does not happen right here. It comes out of the pipes. In a little bit, I'll give you a visual of what that looks like up in there. Um, we have two manuals, so we have two keyboards, and they are two different divisions of the organ. So the upper keyboard here is called the swell division, partly because it is under shutters. You can swell the sound. You can open and close those shutters that surround the pipes, those pipes. The bottom manual is the great division, and those pipes are all out in the open. You cannot change the dynamic level of those pipes, um, but you can with the swell division. Each division has its own ranks of pipes that work either as solo sounds or in combination with other sounds, and the two divisions can work together also in combination. Then you see down below here, if I move a little bit, you'll see some more keys. These are the pedals. Yes, we do play with our feet. Um, that's a lot of the fun, is being able to manage the bass line or sometimes even a solo line with the feet. And the pedal division has its own set of pipes as well, and it too can work in combination with the other divisions. So there's a lot of one plus one equals five or seven or 10. There's cumulative effects with the instrument and how you use the sounds of the instrument. Uh, organs have what we call families of sound. So the very basic sound of an organ, the sound, that doesn't resemble anything else. If you hear this sound, you will know what instrument this is. That just can't be anything but an organ, right? So that is called the principle. Some organs call them a diapason, but it is that basic foundation sound that is 
can't be anything but an organ. So there are different pitches of sound. So if I play an F on that, I get this. But here is another principle that is pitched an octave higher. And funny thing, it's called the octave. And the octave principle sound, if I play the very same key, it plays an octave higher. And you can't see this here on the website, you will see that the, pit, the pipes and the names of the ranks, a set of pipes is called a rank. So a, a set of pipes that sounds exactly like that has one pipe per key, that's a rank of pipes. And the, but next to the names of the ranks, on the website, you will see numbers. And that's because that is, um, corresponds to the different pitch levels of ranks of pipes. We call this one the eight foot principle. It's because the longest pipe of that rank would be eight feet long. And the, the octave is called the four foot. So there's eight and four. Can you guess what a two foot sounds like? You bet, that is still an octave higher playing the very same key, different rank of pipes. There it is. Now, if I put those three together, I'm gonna to do it one by one, add them in, and hear what happens to the sound. So you can imagine that when you start to play chords, bigger sounds together, it really makes a big difference. Here's just the eight foot with the four, with the two. So that's a little bit about pitches and ranks of pipes. And I started with the first family, the principles. So there are a number of principles on the swell division. You've got some principal sounds in the pedal division as well. That's that basic foundational sound of the organ. Now, some of the other families, that's where we get into more tone color, different tone color. Um, there are the flues and the flue pipes, F-L-U-E, include flutes. And here, for example, is an eight-foot flute on the grate. There it is by itself. That's the eight-foot with the four-foot that comes with it. sounds on the entire instrument and it sounds like this by itself to me a little bit like a recorder it makes a wonderful solo sound put a tremolo with it gorgeous solo sound Let's start to look at the reeds. We've got a big trumpet on the grate. So very fiery sound in the reed family. We have an oboe sound on the swell division. And we have a great big reed in the pedal goes all the way down. So what happens when we start to put sounds together? Oh, so much fun. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of the levels, success, succeeding levels of sound that you can get. And all just very quickly in an example by playing the doxology. So if we start the doxology, 
maybe a little bit less, and then we're just going to add all the way through. there are some very high pitched sounds, little tiny pipes up in there, some of them smaller than a pencil, that gives the high shimmery sounds. And some other stops that play pitches that you wouldn't expect and make the chord more colorful or make a sound more colorful. Um, but there's just so much variety. Never tire of coming in here and putting sounds together and finding the right sound. How do we know what sounds to use? Sometimes a composer tells us very specifically what sounds he or she is looking for. Many times there's not much indication. We have to know what organs were like at a certain time period in a certain country. So there's a lot of um, background information that an organist needs to know uh, when deciding which sounds to use for a certain piece of music. So I hope you've enjoyed this little mini tour and I've recorded a couple of pieces here uh, for your enjoyment if you would like to continue watching and listening. The first is a piece by J.S. Bach. It is a trio, so there is one part for the right hand, one part for the left hand, and a part for the pedal that are all equal. They are their own individual important line and Bach puts them together. There's a chorale melody on top in a prominent solo part, solo sound you'll hear, a running part in the left hand, and the pedals are doing a bit of a dance. So I thought you might enjoy that. And the other piece is a piece by my father, an arrangement of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Starts pretty softly with an oboe solo in the manual, the left hand, and then we move to the more principal sound of the organ, and finally to much fuller sound ending almost on full organ. So I hope you will enjoy that. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Organ of First Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. 